So when people come in, they go, what's this then? If you hear people describing what empathy is, quite often people either use the metaphor to walk a mile in someone's shoes or to see the world through someone else's eyes. What if we take that metaphor and we make it literal? The Empathy Museum was born out of a collaboration with myself and a writer, philosopher called Roman Krishnarik. He approached me because he wanted to create an experiential museum. We open a shoe shop where you can come in and you can be fitted with a pair of shoes that actually belong to someone else. You encounter the voice of that person telling you a story about their life. They're almost a bit suspicious at first and they stand outside and they're like, well, what's going on? Suddenly they come into this box and they feel quite connected to it and the people in it. Do you often wear shoes like this? No. Never. <laughs> Rain. Never ever. What are you guys again? Look at that. Uh, I'm a nine. And you can take a walk in that person's shoes. Walk around and then come back inside. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll... And the intimacy of having someone talking to you while you're wearing their shoes and that you're alone and that you're on a physical journey. And it's strangely powerful. I was really inspired by my mother putting on her makeup. When I was a kid, I used to watch my mum put her makeup on and she used to do it really quite quickly. So I've always kind of uh, adopted this notion of like, you know, putting on drag shouldn't take any more than 20 minutes. I mean, it's just, it's stories that you never really think about, you know? And these people are living in the same world that we do, but in completely different realities. I was just talking to the others, I was saying, boots are very heavy. I felt the heaviness more because it was quite a, quite a heavy story, you know? She was a, a lifesaver on, on a lifeboat in, on the Thames. It kind of, you know, made me feel the weight of her, of her job and, and, you know, what she has to carry around with her. I work with human rights and public security in my country and I think empathy is the most difficult thing to, to provide. It's something that uh, you have or you don't have. Uh, and this experience, to be in other people's shoe, is I think uh, the most... Uh, this is I think the only way for you to feel how other people are, how other people feel. I think human rights is about to connect to other people, to recognize me uh, in other people and to, you know, the, the, the same humanity that we have. Uh, so it's a, it's a beautiful way to share experiences. Thank you very much, it was very, very nice. This is a new project called A Thousand and One Books. These are everybody's favourite books on the shelf here and they've donated them through a crowdsourcing fund. And we've covered them so that you can't judge the book by its cover. And they've written their own feelings or statements, comments about the book. You engage in these statements and if you, you feel like you're having a little moment with one of them or one of them jump out to you or you can relate to one of them, then you choose that book, that statement. I read this book in 36 hours straight whilst at university, skipping a whole day of classes because I couldn't put it down. Rarely have I been taken over so completely by a book. I love the feeling and I wish the same will happen to everyone who reads it. It's a really good pitch, isn't it? And it's and then I kind of opened it and you recognise, I recognise the title. And it's one of those sort of heavy-handed classics that I would not normally pick up. But that was... Uh, Chris with a K, whoever he is, or she, has got me. Each book has a number and we have a website where you can then go on and see who's been reading the book that you donated. You say what you did with it, so you can give it to a friend or a stranger, or as it says on the wall there, you can leave it on a park bench for someone else to find. And people get a bit worried sometimes and say, well, what if it's raining? And I say, you could wrap it in cling film. <laughs> They've just loved engaging in other people's little experiences of these books and then having a special little empathic moment in this place and it's really 
brighten their day. We've run a human library around the theme of home and invited all sorts of people to become living books and to be borrowed for an afternoon for conversation with an audience. It's really nice to make connections with people. So you so often you, especially here, you just walk past people and you know, I'd never, I would never have the opportunity to speak to someone like Gary. An ex-prisoner and now an artist talking about how discovering art in prison changed his life. I think it's a, a good thing that they've met someone who used to be a criminal, who after listening to their story, they couldn't imagine that person they've just spoke to being the person I was years ago. The, the idea of speaking, you know, like just about yourself for like 10 minutes as a monologue, um, I just thought it was just deeply self-involved. I was like, you sure you want me to carry on talking about myself? So when I was 16, um, my mum was uh, hit by a motorbike and she had a serious brain injury. Uh, and she went to hospital for two years. It's about kind of how that changed my relationship within my family, with my mum, and as well about my relationship to the home and how it sort of went away from being a home, like my family home that I grew up with, to more of a house to my mum and, and how the, the sort of home sort of took on the accident. One guy just started clapping when I got to the end because it's a you know, good ending that I leave prison um, in the morning and start me first lecture at university later on that morning. I spoke to nine people throughout the whole day, just trying to tell my story and trying to like, a book is, is, is as good every time you read it, right? So in a way I was trying to kind of retain that, that kind of fresh new book smell um, as well for the listener. I was exhausted, absolutely knackered, regardless that I'd, I'd never met them before in my life. They were, by being listeners, by being part of my conversation, they were, they were helpful. There was a very, you know, very personal, very, very strong experience of, of being with another person and like listening to, to his life story. And it struck me that it's, uh, that it's really important to actually listen to people and, and pay more attention to, to them. Simple as that. It was quite a, a lovely moment when we'd sent off someone in Gary's shoes. And I'm guessing you've been, you know what the... It happened that Gary was in our shoebox and he got to meet him. I just hope he doesn't come back and say what a despicable man he is, I've just listened to him. Really interesting. What was it about? A young a guy called Gary, who uh, uh, to start with had a life of crime and was transformed by his discovery of art. Um, but it was brilliantly told. I really felt like I was, was in it. I thought this, you know what, I thought this was it. <laughs> Something I had happened. Simple understandings you get from story sharing that you might not have in your day to day life. Very different characters all on the surface, but they connected, yeah, like old friends. Yeah, as soon as I sort of discovered empathy itself, um, you know, I don't go around sort of like cuddling everyone and want to talk to everyone by any means. You can just write any comment in here. You could write about me and Gary, you could write about... Actual empathy, I sort of didn't discover until quite, a, quite late in life. Everyone's got a little story inside them. They may not realise it until you start talking to them. We, we are social people, we are empathetic people, and we just need a chance to encounter that in our everyday lives. I think it's kind of needed, especially at the moment in terms of what's happening in the world. You know, not all of us want to get married, and just because that law is there, why should just two guys who want to live together, you know, why should we be penalised? Because we don't want to adopt a particular ideal just because it happens to be available. Wait, how was that? An experience, definitely. I spent a lot of time looking at my feet, to be honest, looking at the floor, trying to make sure I don't fall over. Um, I did look up at one point and saw a whole line of people taking pictures of me, which was a bit strange. But um, I think when you, had the, when you got the headphones in and you were listening to the story, I think none of that really kind of mattered. It's something that I never ever would have done otherwise, so I'm not really sure how this has happened. But And then I think listening to the story as well, it's hearing uh, a completely different life to your own, something completely outside of my realm. I enjoyed my walk in heels. It's become a sort of empathic hub, this place. The thing about all the people that have come in is that they've really wanted to 
have a special moment in here. I love people before this project and I love them even more now. It made me want to stay in in dialogue with people. If we're able to kind of get those ideas and, and sort of dissolve that into our everyday interactions, then I mean, you'd, you'd feel so much kind of closer to people and, and you'd get so much more out of them. It's like a reality check, you know, like when you see life on a broader scale, it just makes you realise how, what is important. It made me, anyway, I don't know if it works for other people, but it made me really like other people. If people can just think about others and know what it's like to to walk in someone else's shoes then the world will be a, such a simple and much better place yes that's what empathy is isn't it <laughs>